Welcome to CoreLogic's housing market update for June 2018. This month we'll be focusing on how the housing market is tracked through to the end of May, as well as taking a look at the factors that are placing some downwards pressure on housing market activity and dwelling values. Australian dwelling values slipped 0.1% lower in May, taking the annual change at negative 0.4% into negative territory for the first time since October 2012. In a sign that the housing market is becoming more entrenched in a downturn, May marked the eighth consecutive month-on-month -month fall since the national market peaked in September last year, taking the cumulative decline in dwelling values to 1.1% through to the end of May 2018. The negative headline growth rate is attributable to weakening housing market conditions across the capital cities, led by Melbourne and Sydney, where previously capital gains were nation leading. Sydney and Melbourne comprise approximately 60% of Australia's housing market by value and about 40% by number. So the performance of these two cities has a larger effect on the headline market performance. With housing affordability remaining a challenge in the larger cities, demand is naturally transitioning to the medium and high density sector, where the market entry point is typically more affordable and housing stock is often more strategically located along the transport spines and close to major working nodes. This broader demand base has seen unit markets in Sydney and Melbourne outperforming the detached housing sector, despite the significant number of units that have been built over the recent years. Most other cities where affordability constraints aren't as pressing continue to see house values outperform the unit sector. The combined regional markets have helped to offset a broader decline with dwelling values consistently rising outside of the capital cities, albeit at a much lower pace relative to the growth seen in Sydney and Melbourne over the previous growth phase. The combined regional markets index nudged 0.2% higher over the month to reach a new record high in May. Across the regional markets, Geelong maintained its position as the best performing area outside of the capital cities, with dwelling values up 10.2% over the past 12 months. Across the top 10 performing regional markets, it's a mix of satellite cities such as Geelong, Ballarat, Newcastle, as well as lifestyle markets such as the Sunshine Coast, the Southern Highlands in New South Wales and Shoalhaven and Coffs Harbour. Regional housing trends are also now seeing less drag from the mining regions. Although the weakest performing areas are generally still linked to the mining sector, the declining trend has eased off and actually levelled out in many of these markets. Apart from our hedonic indices, a wide range of other measures provide further evidence of weakening housing markets. Advertised stock levels have been trending higher across the capital cities, up 4.2% on a year ago, once again being driven by Sydney, where advertised listing numbers are 20.4% higher than a year ago, and in Melbourne, where stock levels are almost 8% higher. Every other capital city has actually seen an overall reduction in advertised listing numbers. More listings on the market means more choice and less urgency for buyers. This lack of urgency is also evident in auction clearance rates, which have consistently trended lower since the middle of last year. Over the first week of June, Sydney's auction clearance rate dipped below 50% for the first time since 2012, and Melbourne's clearance rates have fallen below 60% for the first time since 2014 over recent weeks. Transaction volumes have continued to trend lower, with CoreLogic's estimate of settled sales tracking 7.7% lower year on year. While this figure will revise higher as off the plan sales move through to settlement, it's clear that activity has reduced substantially since the first round of macro prudential policies were announced back in December 2014. Now let's take a look at the housing markets across each of the capital cities. In Sydney, dwelling values have been falling since July last year. Market conditions have favoured sellers for much of the past six years. However, increased stock for sale and slower selling times means that buyers are now well and truly back in the driver's seat. Advertised stock levels have increased by 20% compared with a year ago, and homes are selling in 43 days on average compared with just 31 days at the same time last year. Market conditions have been weaker across the more expensive end of the market, while dwellings at the more affordable end of the valuation spectrum are still seeing some subtle growth, likely supported by a surge in first home buyer activity, which is helping to prop up prices at the most affordable end of the market. Melbourne's down phase commenced in November last year, with the rate of decline accelerating past Sydney's over the past three months when values were down by 1.2%. Apart from tighter credit, an increase in the number of properties available for sale has been a key factor in the slowdown, as well as reduced housing affordability over recent years. Weaker conditions have been most evident across higher value housing stock. 
The most expensive 10% of properties have seen the values fall by 4.8% since peaking last year, while the most affordable 20% of the market has continued to see some subtle growth and values remain at record highs. Similarly, the lower price points of the apartment market have seen unit values hold firm over the first five months of the year, while house values have reduced by 1.9%. Dwelling values in Brisbane were up slightly in May, however the trend rate of growth has slowed as buyers find it harder to obtain finance. The slowdown in capital gain trends comes despite population growth ramping up and the Queensland jobs market showing a marked improvement relative to previous years. Importantly, the Brisbane unit market has posted a rare rolling quarter of growth, hinting that we might be starting to see some subtle improvements in what's been a very tough market for many years. Unit construction peaked in late 2016, so supply concerns are starting to become less pressing. Value growth has remained in mild positive territory across Adelaide. Although the CoreLogic index jumped by half a percent in May, the first five months of the year have seen the market remain virtually flat, with dwelling values up by only 0.1%. Advertised stock levels have reduced by almost 6% relative to the same time a year ago, which is supporting stronger selling conditions and a subtle improvement in the average selling time reducing from 43 days a year ago to 41 days in 2018. Another indicator pointing towards better selling conditions is the rate of vendor discounting, which has also posted a subtle improvement, reducing from 5.9% a year ago to 5.8%. The Perth housing market appears to have flattened out over recent months, and the CoreLogic Index has actually recorded a subtle rise of 0.1% over the three months ending May. Listing numbers are reducing and homes are selling faster than they were a year ago at 58 days on average. Perth values remain close to 11% below their 2014 high and even though the market seems to be moving through the trough, the recovery phase is likely to be a gradual one. Interstate migration rates remain weak and a supply overhang is still evident across the outer fringe detached housing sector. Hobart is overwhelmingly the strongest market for value growth currently, a position it's expected to continue to hold over the coming months. Dwelling values are up by 12.7% over the past 12 months, by far the fastest rate of growth amongst the capital cities. Low stock levels are a key factor driving the consistently strong growth conditions, with advertised stock levels tracking 27.5% lower than a year ago to be virtually at record lows. Such low supply levels is contributing to some urgency in the market, supporting exceptionally strong selling conditions. Homes in across Hobart are selling on average in just 28 days. Darwin dwelling values posted a rare increase, increasing by 1.3% over the three months ending May. Despite the recent improvement, dwelling values remain 7.9% lower over the past 12 months, and values are 21% lower relative to their 2014 peak. Although the market may be close to finding a flaw in values, any recovery phase is likely to be a gradual one due to the persistently soft migration trends and little in the way of growth drivers. The Canberra housing market saw dwelling values rise by 0.8% over the three months ending May. However, the annual trend in capital gains has reduced from 8.8% a year ago to be just 2.3% over the 12 months ending May. Advertised stock levels remain roughly level with last year and homes are selling in an average of 49 days. That's nine days longer than the same time a year ago. Previously, housing market cycles have generally been influenced by changes in interest rates or by economic conditions. However, the current easing in growth conditions is very much a factor of tighter credit policy. Similar to the current softening in housing market conditions, the previous downturn, which ran briefly from late 2015 through to early 2016, was also driven by tighter credit. It lasted for only five months nationally, with values falling by slightly less than 1% before surging higher again on the back of two 25 basis point cash rate cuts and a rebound in housing credit growth. Investors have been most heavily affected by changes in credit availability. Investment credit growth is tracking at just 2.3% per annum compared with owner-occupiers, where credit growth is at 8.1% per annum. The concentration of investment activity has been heavily skewed towards Sydney and Melbourne, and it's in these cities where market demand has fallen the most. Subsequently, both cities have experienced more substantial declines in property values. While the drop of the investor market has been partially offset by an upswing in first home buyers, we're already starting to see tentative signs that the stimulus of stamp duty concessions in New South Wales and Victoria is starting to wear off. First home buyer activity actually peaked in November last year. 
Furthermore, despite the fall in investor demand and the lift in first home buyer demand, the value of housing finance commitments to investors remains well in excess of value to first home buyers. With finance restrictions likely to remain tight, despite the 10% growth cap on investment lending being lifted next month, the chances of a rebound in the housing market over the coming months is unlikely. Investors are still facing a premium on their mortgage rates of approximately 60 basis points, more if they're not paying down their principal. Add to that the fact that lenders have intensified scrutiny around a borrower's expenses and are now less willing to originate loans on interest-only terms. Additionally, the Prudential Regulator, APRA, has advised banks to rein in lending on high debt-to-income ratios, which will more adversely affect the Sydney and Melbourne markets, where housing is overall much more expensive than in other parts of the country. Lenders remain very much focused on keeping high loan devaluation ratios at low proportions of total lending, with the latest data indicating only 20.8% of new loans had a deposit of less than 20%. While credit availability is arguably the major driver of the housing market slowdown, housing affordability is another important consideration, particularly in Sydney and Melbourne, where the dwelling price to income ratio is 9.3 and 8.0 respectively, substantially higher than the other capitals. With dwelling values so high relative to household incomes and little in the way of income growth, saving for a deposit and funding high transactional costs are likely to be more challenging than actually servicing a mortgage for many prospective buyers. Although the exuberance has left the housing market and conditions have been dampened, it's clear that values aren't falling off a cliff. Low mortgage rates are likely to persist for some time yet, and we're still seeing high migration rates supporting housing demand. Although lower dwelling values will erode household wealth to some extent, falling home values will help to ease the affordability burden that's plagued the previously hot markets of Sydney and Melbourne. While housing credit growth has slowed, the trends remain very much positive, especially for owner-occupiers where housing credit is up by 8% over the past year. Although the outlook for housing markets remain one where the headline trends are likely to remain negative, we certainly don't see dwelling values falling significantly. With the market changing so rapidly, it's important to keep up to date with the latest trends, facts and figures. The most up to date and comprehensive research can be found at the CoreLogic website at www.corelogic.com.au.